teaching the truth is not radical or wrong. That was the message today from the president of one of the largest teachers unions in the United States. We're fighting back. Senate Bill 377. This one aims to stifle some of the difficult conversations about race and racism in Georgia classrooms up through colleges. Florida becomes the latest state to ban schools from teaching about systemic racism. This is a deliberate plan to politicize and whitewash history. Your time is up. Thank you. Allow teachers to teach the truth. Yeah. and welcome to the first ever Black History Now Awards brought to you by Color of Change. Tonight we will uplift and highlight some of America's biggest champions when it comes to our communities, learning about and celebrating our history. But that's why we're all here tonight, folks, because we understand that America's true history is much more storied, complex, and diverse than textbooks would have you believe. And now that full history is under attack, like the Ghanaian word Sankofa teaches us, you cannot know where you're going unless you know where you came from. With that said, we have an incredible evening lined up for you. Tonight, celebrating trailblazers and change makers who are making sure a full American history is available to the nation's children. Now, please join me in welcoming Color Chains President Rashad Robinson, you know he got his hat on, and Vice President and Chief of Campaigns, Arisha Hatch. Thank you, Roland, and welcome to Color of Change's Black History Now Awards. Right now, people in communities all across America need our help. Teachers are under attack. Elected officials and school officials are facing very real threats to their lives and livelihoods. Students are struggling to learn in peace. Parents are struggling to ensure their kids do not become targets of propaganda. Community leaders are overwhelmed with constant misinformation about the good progress we've made when it comes to teaching students about the role of race and racism in our country and in our lives. So much of that misinformation is reinforced by sensationalized news media accounts and irresponsible and reckless social media corporations. Educational history must get closer and closer to actual history, not further from it and people should become more and more invested in working towards a racially just world, not driven further away from it. Racial justice is a fundamentally dangerous idea to many conservatives. Firstly, ensuring true equity and democracy in society threatens their social agenda. Secondly, our movement's special ability to motivate millions of people to action in service of progressive social change is even more dangerous. It threatens their political power. Though America has always benefited from dismantling structural racism, those who depend on racial hierarchy and inequality for profit or for self-promotion are deeply threatened by it. And that's why conservatives are on this extremist crusade. More truth in education leads to more equity in society, and they can't deal with it. So they don't want students to learn about Tulsa. Neither black people's business success in Tulsa, nor the white-led massacre there, or Tuskegee, neither the horrific study nor the heroic airmen. They don't want students to learn the truth about slavery and the Civil War. The contributions of black people to America's success, the origins and true working of our criminal justice system. Most of all, they don't want the next generation learning about the benefits of living in a truly equitable, multiracial society, nor what it takes to get there. They want to make up their own history rather than telling the truth. 
So we cannot let them cheat millions of students out of the education they deserve. Tonight, we're going to celebrate seven individuals who are fighting every day to challenge the new slate of anti-black history laws and bring awareness to the need for full American history lessons in our public schools. Our first award is Advocacy and Perseverance in Education Award, named after Pulitzer Prize nominee Richard D. Delgado. As a pioneer in analyzing the social construction of race in our culture, Richard Delgado is an American legal scholar who teaches civil rights and critical race theory at the University of Alabama School of Law. He has had an immense impact on the movement, folks. Tremendous impact. Please help us welcome the living legend, Richard Delgado. Yeah, I feel like I'm at the tippy top of my game, looking down at the rafters. I had to sun these boys, can't leave them bastards. Hi, I'm Richard Delgado, professor of law at University of Alabama. Last year, national headlines erupted when James Whitfield, principal of, of the Colleyville Heritage High School, was forced to resign amid accusations that he violated one of Texas's newly passed critical race theory laws, which was really just att attacking black history and making white Americans uncomfortable. Whitfield is a highly respected and celebrated educator and school administrator who, shortly after George Floyd's murder in 2020, wrote a letter to the school community outlining systemic racism and asking parents to commit to being anti-racist. After an initial surge of support, he saw a cultural shift as the community became inspired and engaged. It seemed the mostly white, small uh, Texas town was ready to embrace the push for diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. A year later, however, dissension started brewing when a white man who had lost a 2021 bid to serve on the school board accused Whitfield of promoting critical race theory and demanded his firing. The false accusation was met with cheers despite zero evidence that critical race theory was ever actually taught in, in public schools. And it became all too clear that racism lay at the heart of the accusation. While Whitfield and the school board have agreed to part ways, he remains undeterred and will continue to work in education, fighting for racial equity and inclusion for all. Please congratulate Dr. James Whitfield for receiving the Richard Delgado Award for advocacy and perseverance in education. Welcome to the Lions Den and I'm Mufasa, big boss in charge of coming in like a bull. You see me raising a stack up. Thank you so much, Richard, for presenting me with this prestigious award and to the color of change for your steadfast commitment to justice and racial equity. To receive the Richard Delgado Award for advocacy and perseverance in education is such an honor. Richard Delgado is one of the most influential legal scholars in the United States and has been a champion for human rights, justice, and racial equity for decades. As one of the founders of critical race theory, Richard Delgado has been attacked by misinformed and intolerant individuals, yet he continues to press on. These same individuals are the very people who came after me. But here I stand. I stand on the shoulders of giants like Richard Delgado and those who came before me, and I vow to do my part to help build a more just and inclusive world. I want to encourage people to be active in your local elections. They matter, especially school board elections. If we are not careful, we run the risk of people disrupting the livelihoods of educators and the educational experiences of our youth. And we just simply cannot afford that. Our people deserve better. And thank you again for this most prestigious award. That's right. Confidence, yeah. Uh, confidence. That's me. Hold up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry if I stutter. Yeah. My brain move a little faster than others. Yeah. I even keep a close eye on my brother. What can be said of the most prolific, influential Black feminist America has seen in the last half century? Bell Hooks, the groundbreaking author, professor, feminist, and social activist, permanently changed the course of Black women's rights and visibility in America. While over the span of her career, she published 40 books and numerous scholarly articles, taught at several of the nation's most prestigious institutions, 
and gave countless newsworthy speeches, some of her greatest impacts include the contributions she made to the classrooms surrounding Black history lessons. Hooks prioritized truth-telling and authenticity above all else. Even back in the 1970s and 80s, she understood that current education practices supported racial, sexual, and class boundaries, and believed a feminist approach could open the gateways to true independence. As she was quoted as saying in 1994's Teaching to Transgress, to teach in a manner that respects and cares for the souls of our students is essential if we are to provide the necessary conditions where learning can most deeply and intimately begin. Despite classrooms being inherently prejudiced and biased, she saw opportunities for liberation. Hooks channeled the heart of education when she'd ask, how can we rethink teaching practices in the age of multiculturalism? And how should we deal with racism and sexism in the classroom? And now, a special presentation from poet and National Geographic explorer, Aaliyah Pierce, to honor Bell Hooks' rich legacy. We bring fire to miseducation when the waiting for pages to affirm black existence has taken far too long. When the wise have yet to rest, when to begin again, there must be the burning of every false version of history, the deconstructing of every problematic narrative, the turning of every uncomfortable silence into ash, and the resurrecting of every untold story that tells baby girl black lives lived well and wide across kingdoms and oceans and time. We have been witness and warrior to the moving of mountains. So to hold this land tender, understand black life is not porcelain pain, rather powerful peace. There is joy in this blood, celebration in this speech, song, swag, and step. Black bodies birth jazz dance. Black bodies birth cosmic cowboys and Afro-futuristic villages, all while feeding the village. With the radical love of black lives, truth-telling black life, there can be a healing of generations who thought that our beginning started in the hulls of ships, that our beginning was never ours. So if the practice of freedom is education, then this story must be told. We must rebuild. We must resist. We must begin again. What a gift it is that she left us all with such a rich storied collection of her academic works. And what a moving performance. Next up, let's welcome esteemed professor and author Tara Yasso, who's presenting, well, she should, the award's named after her, the Tara J. Yasso Award for Excellence in Counter Storytelling in Education. Tara has built her career by examining how educational access and opportunity impacts communities of color and we are honored to have her here tonight. Hello, saludos. Down at Riverside High School, formerly Robert E. Lee High School in Jacksonville, Florida, Amy Donofrio has built a reputation for advocacy and allyship for marginalized students. Recognizing her students' need for additional support, in 2015, she co-founded the EVAC movement, focused on reframing narratives about Black youth from at risk to at hope. Unfortunately, the district found numerous ways to undermine EVAC's mission, refusing field trips, cutting funding, and demoting its status from a class to an informal group. It all came to a head when Reginald Boston, a former EVAC member was gunned down by local police in 2020. When Donofrio dared to hang a Black Lives Matter flag outside her classroom, marking it as a safe space for students to process Boston's murder, she was disciplined. By refusing the administration's demands to take it down, she quickly found herself embroiled in a legal battle. And with the support of the Southern Poverty Law Center, she worked to protect her First Amendment right to freedom of speech. 
Donofrio has worked hard to empower more educators to stand beside their students, help them see themselves as connected across time and place in this struggle for justice and fight against racism. I am honored to have this award in my name and to award Amy Donofrio with the first Tara J. Yasso Award for Excellence in Counter Storytelling in Education. Hi, my name is Sierra Wega, and I'm a program manager here at Color of Change. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to accept this award on Amy's behalf. Amy has set an example of what true allyship can look like. She's used her role as an educator to uplift and defend the voices and needs of her students. This care was not rooted in performative action, but rather one that displayed authentic concern, even at the expense of her livelihood. We appreciate all you have done and continue to do to amplify Black voices and push forward accurate Black history. Thank you, Amy. Now that was absolutely beautiful and teachers like Amy are essential to our nation's future. It is a game changer to have teachers ready and willing to advocate for their students' needs, especially when the stakes are so high. Next up, we have Chef Jerome Grant hailing from DC. Where the food at? Hello, my name is Jerome Grant and I'm a chef here in Washington, DC. I am a connector of culture and food and love to make sure that we as folks are visible in this food space and continue to tell our story about our traditions and our heritage. So we're gonna play a cool game of true or false with some awesome food facts. Let's begin. The traditional West African diet centers around off cuts of meat such as ham hocks and offals. What do you guys think? False. The West African diet was mostly plant-based. Many recipes featured ingredients such as rice, okra, hot peppers, and yams. Meat was occasionally eaten in stews or for special celebrations. Next question. James Hemings was the first American to train as a chef in France. That's true. Hemings was actually an African-American chef born in Virginia. Hemings is known to introduce some of the most iconic dishes into American cuisine, such as mac and cheese, firm ice cream, and meringue. All right, everybody, one more question, true or false? Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee. Well, that's true. While most coffee today is harvested in Central and South America, Ethiopia is believed to be the origin of the world's first coffee. The word coffee actually stems from a Southwestern Ethiopian word, kafa. The coffee ceremony and the gathering of friends, family, or business over coffee is one of the most important social occasions in Ethiopia. I gotta tell you, I just love black folks and our unique culture. The beauty and dedication to our countless stories and history is what keeps me going. I, for one, am grateful for Color of Change for giving us this platform to highlight the necessary hard work that's being done to protect so much of what is sacred, our truths, our history, and our reality. Next up, our third award is the Nicole Hannah-Jones Award for Innovation in History Education. Nicole Hannah-Jones, the Pulitzer Prize winning writer for the New York Times Magazine and the creator of the 1619 Project, which aims to reframe America's history by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the very center of a national narrative. Join me in welcoming a member of Color of Changes Leadership to present the Nicole Hannah-Jones Award for Innovation in History Education. Thank you, Roland, for that introduction. While he first grabbed headlines back in 2019 after being elected Yale University's first black student body president at just 19 years old, that was just the beginning. Khalil Green has since gone on to build a powerful, influential presence on social media and in corporate America. Known as the Gen Z historian on Instagram and TikTok, Green has captivated audiences by expounding on lesser known aspects of American history such as the whitewashing of Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy, the Tuskegee medical experiment, and the relevancy of Black History Month. Moving into 2022, Green has found himself doing just that by collaborating with various corporations, including Facebook, Smithsonian, 
PBS, and the Boys and Girls Club, among others, to educate anyone who will listen about the various initiatives and DEI standards that Gen Z has for our society. I am so pleased to welcome Khalil Green in receiving the Nicole Hannah Jones Award for Innovation in History and Education. At the top of the class on a roll, and it's time to run it up, yeah, you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor. Hi everyone, my name is Khalil Green and I go by the Gen Z historian on social media. I wanna give a huge thank you to Color of Change for awarding me the Nicole Hannah Jones Award for Innovation in History Education. I first started making TikToks about a year ago on MLK Day to combat the whitewashing of Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. And since then, my videos have gone viral and reached people around the globe and I've been featured all over news articles for my work. And I'm so thankful that I'm getting to share education that other educators before me really dug up and shared with the world. One of those educators is Nicole Hannah Jones, who had such amazing and impactful work on the 1619 Project herself. However, I also wouldn't be here without organizations that helped me learn outside of school, like the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So whoever you are, support your local Boys and Girls Clubs and share information about Black history year round. Thank you so much. My name is Tiffany. I'm with Color of Change, and I have a very important message I, I want to share with you. I spent 33 years in education. Never, ever should a child be labeled a criminal. I am fed up, and you should be too. Our fourth award of the evening is the Derrick Bell Award for Truth in Education. Derrick Bell was a prominent civil rights lawyer and activist whose contributions include becoming the first black tenured professor of law at Howard University in 1971. Please welcome another member of Color Change's dynamic leadership team to present the Derrick Bell Award for Truth in Education. Uh, for this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, look, I think it's time you what an amazing, inspiring evening we're enjoying. This past November, after taking a look around her community of the Farmington Public School District in Michigan and recognizing the wealth of diversity and experiences it contained, Dr. Hayes Goodrum curated a 21-day equity challenge. She hoped to create a safe space for the community to come together and share uncomfortable discussions related to the diverse population. As the school district's assistant superintendent of DEI, Dr. Goodrum researched various sources to curate this exceptional community initiative, including the Justice Leaders Collaborative, the Equity Literacy Institute, and Harvard Graduate School of Education. Unfortunately, parents and many local leaders believe the program was self-righteous, pseudoscientific, and divisive. Within days, protests erupted, insults were thrown, and ultimately the challenge was removed from the school board's website. In the weeks following, the attacks have continued, including a January 2022 board meeting where the uproar lasted hours. Despite the continued backlash, Dr. Goodrum has continued moving forward, reminding everyone that she does not need their approval to make a positive impact in the world. Please congratulate Dr. Bobby Hayes Goodrum for receiving the Derrick Bell Award for Truth in Education. I know they all wish I'd take away they made it, but so what an honor and a privilege it is to be a part of the Color of Changes Black History Now Awards and to be the inaugural recipient of the Derrick Bell Truth in Education. Thank you, thank you, thank you to my fellow educational revolutionary, Nicole Atkins, for the nomination. I am just, I feel very blessed to be able to, again, um, put forth the work that we are all doing as far as making sure that there is equity in education. It is very important that we engage our community in this work. And so I encourage you all to, to run for school board positions, to go out and support your school board as they encounter opposition, as school districts work to ensure that the history that's being taught in our schools is accurate and that we are allowed to allocate our resources in a way that ensures that there is equity, that all children have what they need in order to succeed. Thank you. Come.
dent, yeah. Promise I'm really this the star in the shit. And yeah, you're now viewing the greatest of all time. No need for thank yous, the pleasure is all mine. That's my confidence. Today we're celebrating people who have stood up for the truth. As storytellers, as leaders in education, teachers in our schools, and teachers in our culture. They told our country's history the way it should be told. The truth of black history, the truth of white history, the truth of everyone's contributions to the history of this country. Sidney Poitier, the full scope of his life cannot be easily summarized. He was an incredible talent in a time that desperately needed heroes. His trailblazing acting career spanned six decades, more than 70 films, documentaries, and television shows. Due to his countless examples of dignity, intelligence, and excellence, he received the highest honors in both acting and humanitarian work. He helped teach America about the Black experience, which included creating works of art that helped teachers in schools across America create a more honest picture of American history. His work elevated Black humanity, opened eyes to ignore oppression, and represented the hope for America that did not yet exist. He unapologetically centered Black hope, joy, love, pain, hurt, and anger, presenting it in his authentic and powerful style. He did so much to make a place for us in history and in the story of history. To honor Sidney Poitier's legacy of black excellence in entertainment and in using the force of culture to change society, please welcome singer, songwriter, Charity, to perform Morning. Running from my shadow and running from the 
Charity, thank you for that wonderful, wonderful rendition, and you certainly blew us away. Great job. Next up, we'd like to present the Mari Matsuda Award for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in Education. Matsuda is an accomplished lawyer, professor, and community leader whose publications are some of the most cited law review articles of all time. Folks, she is highly revered and respected. Matsuda has lectured at nearly every major university, and other law professors count her as having significant influence throughout their careers. Equity-focused leadership in our education system is not often seen or heard of due to various detractors and naysayers whose efforts have gone unchecked for far too long. In Tacoma, Washington, however, Principal Daw believed that there could be another way. Despite living and teaching in a majority white community, Daw saw an opportunity to promote truth-telling and personal reflection. She dared to imagine a school where black history and other diverse American histories were centered, where cultural sensitivities to teaching were the standard and where students, parents, and community members were elevated to engage with staff as colleagues. She created a racial justice team, which started with only three volunteers, but quickly grew to encompass much of the staff. And when the pandemic forced Daw School to shutter its doors, she made the choice to fully support the parents of color seeking permanent homeschool options who were tired of battling racism in traditional school environments. Let's congratulate Principal Constance Daw for receiving the Mari Matsuda Award for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in Education. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so honored to receive this award. It is uh, not something that I would ever expect, and I really feel so humbled to receive it. Many thanks to Kayla Schwartz, teacher extraordinaire, who uh, recommended me for this opportunity, and um, to the entire Franklin Elementary School community, the staff, the families, and the students. So proud of, of you. So grateful for you. Many thanks also to my parents, James and Sharon Shepard, to my husband, David, and our kids, um, and all of my ancestors who have brought me forward to this moment and the children yet to come. Thank you very much. Because of the work that's possible when we work together with our families, I encourage you to follow the Family Leadership Design Collaborative. It's headquartered in the University of, of Washington and it is work that connects families to the actual development of their schools. I am so grateful again to Color of Change for this opportunity. And let's do some more work. Thank you so much. All right, folks, our next award is named after the esteemed Thurgood Marshall, of course, an unbelievable legal giant uh, who made huge contributions. If you talk about the Black Freedom Movement, you talk about where we are today's African Americans, you cannot get past the contributions of Thurgood Marshall, becoming the first African American to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. Folks, joining us right now uh, to present the Thurgood Marshall Award is the host of How to Citizen Podcast, Baratunde Thurston. He's here, the Thurgood Marshall Public Servant for Fair Education. What's up, y'all? I hope your evening is a dope one. I'm Baratunde Day Thurston, writer, comedian, host of the How to Citizen podcast. Now, truly the definition of a servant leader, Representative Carol Ammons is an activist turned lawmaker and the first black woman elected to the 103rd district encompassing the Champaign-Urbana metro area in Illinois. Representative Ammons spent her early years in government serving on the school board, the county board, and later the city council where she built a reputation for having close-knit ties and authentic connections to her local community. While in office, Representative Ammons has dedicated her time and energy toward helping her district and state pass some monumental legislation, including equity and funding and accessibility for public education and creating the Illinois Higher Education and Prison Task Force 
to analyze the state of higher education programs for incarcerated individuals. Laser focused on cultivating the crucial relationship between community organizers and the state legislature, Representative Ammons has shown a commitment to building opportunities, investing in prison reform, and expanding the resources of education policy at a time when so many policymakers are taking aggressive steps to dismantle and discourage progress when it relates to marginalized communities of color. Please congratulate Representative Carol Ammons for receiving the Thurgood Marshall Public Service for Fair Education Award. Way to rep, rep. Hi, my name is Carol Ammons, and I'm honored to represent the 103rd District in the Illinois General Assembly. Thank you to Color Change for acknowledging my work, and thank you for always being a strong partner and an important vehicle to make change happen. As the recipient of the Thurgood Marshall Public Servant for Fair Education Award, I'm reminded of his commitment to use his gifts, skills, and talent to fight injustice in the courts. During his time, Justice Marshall ushered in an era of equality and fairness by reminding our country that separate is not equal and that changing the law to bend towards justice requires building a movement. My colleagues and I do this work so we can create a better future for black and brown students, but also with the hope that they feel empowered to speak out against the injustices that still exist. No one says it better than Justice Marshall. Where you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out because this is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, pass it on. Thank you again to Color Change for this humbling award and congratulations to the other impressive awardees for being honored tonight. Here we go, at the top of the class on a roll. And it's time to run it up, yeah you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor. Ay, on a roll, here we go, here we go. Yeah, we winning by a landslide. Never see me coming on my All right, folks, we're almost done. This beautiful evening is winding down, but we are not yet done presenting our awards. The next one is named after one bad sister. That's right, of the Kimberly Crenshaw Award for Intersexuality in Education. Kimberly Crenshaw is an academic pioneer in racial justice and critical race studies who introduced intersexuality theory and intersectional feminism in the 1980s. Folks, that was an absolute game changer in academia. So please welcome another member of the Color of Change leadership team to present the Kimberly Crenshaw Award for Intersexuality in Education. Yeah, I feel like I'm at the tip of the top of my game, looking down at the rafters. I had to sun these boys, can't leave them best. We are now ready to present our final award of the evening. George Smith's fearless journey to embrace their experiences, identity, and voice have placed them in a league truly of their own. As an award-winning Black, non-binary writer, author, and activist, Johnson is no stranger to repeated attacks amid the recent waves of heightened scrutiny and politicized rhetoric against Black history in our public schools. This all came to a head in 2020 when their best-selling, award-winning, debut memoir, All Boys Aren't Blue, discussing their adolescence growing up as a young Black queer boy in New Jersey, was published. It's since been banned in 15 states and counting, with claims that it violates states' obscenity laws. Despite lawmakers weaponizing their work, Johnson dares to have the audacity to tell their story on their own terms, and people are listening. It was named the 2020 Best Book of the Year by Amazon, the New York and Chicago Public Libraries, and Kirkus Reviews. And Gabrielle Union Wade's production company optioned it for an upcoming series. Johnson refuses to be silenced and has a second, follow-up memoir titled We Are Not Broken that will be published later in 2022. Through their writing, Johnson has given a voice to the vastly underrepresented Black queer folks in America. Please celebrate George M. Johnson receiving the Kimberly Crenshaw Award for Intersectionality in Education. It be no arguments, cause you now viewing the greatest of all time, saying I can't get better, I promise they all lie. I want to thank Color of Change and Bree Davis for selecting me today to receive such an amazing award. Uh, I live my life as a Black, queer, non-binary, HIV person, which 
can create some very interesting and powerful storytelling. I live my life by the Toni Morrison quote, if there's a book that you wanna read and it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. In writing All Boys Aren't Blue, as well as my second memoir, We Are Not Broken, I wrote the books that I wish I had a chance to read when I was growing up. When you grow up and you don't see images of yourself or stories of yourself, it's hard to know that you even exist in this world. My charge to everyone today is to make sure that you too are writing the stories that you wish you had when you were younger. Continue telling the stories that you wish you had when you were younger and continue to remember our words are one of the most powerful tools we have in the fight against oppression. And now I would like to present to you a clip from the All Boys Aren't Blue dramatic reading starring Delon Burnside. Black boys are supposed to be rough and tough, to suck up the pain and not shed a tear. Being black and queer brings on layers of issues. There can be both a fear of your own community and a fear of dealing with bullying from other children who don't respect your identity. When that kind of pressure builds within a young queer kid, the fear becomes constricting and can wrap you in layers each more difficult to peel away as you grow up. As an adult, I've gone through the unlearning to understand that my community's treatment of black queer children is in fact a byproduct of a system of assimilation to whiteness and respectability that forces black people to fit one mold in society. One where being a man means you must be straight and masculine. I didn't have the ability to separate my blackness from my queerness. The loss of my smile was as much a denial of my black joy as it was my queer joy. When I did smile, it was a coping mechanism. My smile was a mask that hid the pain of suppressing who I was. George, I appreciate that. What an example you set for your generation and the folks following in your footsteps. Your black story deserves to be told and we're honored to have you grace this stage tonight to tell it. Representation matters and I can't wait to see what the future has in store for you. All right, folks, that just about wraps up our show for you this evening. I want to extend an enormous congratulations to all of the award winners tonight. Thank you for upholding the critical needs and values of true American history and fighting the good fight for us all. Also want to thank you to our viewers and audience for spending your evening with us and joining the first ever Black History Now Awards. As I always end my show, Roller Martin Unfiltered. Holla! Yeah, whoa, look, they, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win. I'm going up. I, I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again. See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch. I'm setting the stage, you should give me my prize. You ain't got a soul, you lacking the spirit. You talk out your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it. I've been really happy you to sit and watch me win again and win again and win again. I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sitting in the